people have been asking about it so without further ado let me um damn let me try to update some people on what's going on and uh i'm gonna try to answer some of the questions that a lot of people have been hitting me up with so here we go all right so first of all welcome to the interior of the 190e where i'm gonna explain a few things and let's start from there. The cluster, as you can see, is from a 36 It's not pretty, but what I did is I took out the 190E cluster, I took out the E36 one, and meshed the two together. So as of now, I don't have a speed reading because the E36 differential has a speed sensor in it, but the 190E differential doesn't. So I have to rig up a different type of speed sensor. Haven't done that yet. Same with the gas. I haven't rigged up anything yet, but have to rig those two up. As far as I'm concerned, these are the only two gauges that I need, which is RPMs and temp. Next, as you can see here, I have like a little switch panel. This is a computer. This is um, fuel. And this is everything else with lights and dash and everything. And this is just a battery kill switch. Um, I still need to use the key because I have a steering lock. And yeah, I could remove that, but I don't want to. I like to keep that in there because people could steal my car. Next thing a lot of people have been asking me is about power steering. So let me go ahead and unlock this. There we go. So I put an electric power steering in this car. Uh, I, I could start turning the wheel without starting the car. Watch. I'm just going to put power to the car. That's the electric power steering. And now I could turn without any issue. See? Electric power steering. I'll show you how that's done. Let's go under the hood. This is an electric power steering pump. That's from a Volvo S40. It has a power that you give it from the battery and it has a ground. And there's three wires right here that you just hot wire two of them together and it works. You can look this up on Google and you'll find all the info. I'm still retaining the original steering box that's back there. Um, what I did was I got a custom line made right here for the pressure hose which is this one right here. And then a return hose, which is just a regular hose that I put in. The uh, main thing is you want to get a good pressure hose made. And that's how I have my electric power steering set up. So the engine has a separate wi wiring harness that goes to the inside that's connected to this panel right here, right there. And the, um, the ECU is back here. This is where I put it. Right here. I put it in a Ziploc because I don't want it to get wet. But that's the 413 DME. And I actually have a Miller War chip in there. And this is that USB that I could plug into my computer. And I have a little dial where I could switch different tunes, which is pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna start the car to show you exactly what I mean. So this is my first tune, which is M50 stock, which is gonna rev up to here. And now this is a uh, like launch control. So 
So you can see I have different like tunes on here. It's pretty cool. While we're at it, let me show you the suspension setup. Okay, so let's go inside right over here. Take a look at some stuff. These are E36 coilovers and this mounting point right here is not flush. If you look carefully, I had to put down a bead of weld on the bottom over there. Let's see if you can get it in there. I don't think I can get it, but if you look carefully, you could see it right there. It's not flush. So I had to put a bead of weld on the bottom to make it flush so that it wouldn't break off. A lot of people also cut it and change the mounting point of this or change the mounting point of this. I just found this to be a simple solution. Um, these are the control arms that I extended and the tie rods in the back that I also have videos of. And I still retained both springs on the shocks and the car. It adds a lot of rigidity and helps with stiffening up the car. These are the top hats that I'm using. And I just put the E36 sleeve on the inside. And um, these are the E36 coilovers that I have on the car right now. And that's how they're mounted. And don't forget they don't mount totally flush so you're gonna have to weld something in there or uh, put a spacer in there that's beveled okay so now we're looking at the oil pan clearance with the subframe clearance all right so that's a tight fit right there but what's more important is the clearance for the steering arms okay so these steering arms, if you're gonna retain your old steering box, you're gonna have to shave your oil pan so that when they move, you see how close it is to the oil pan? Like I have my wheels turned. So they're gonna move up and down. And when it does, it's gonna hit your oil pan and it's gonna bend. Let's get them from here. That's how much you're gonna have to shave your oil pan. All that. I can't get a better shot, but you can pretty much see. So, that's that. And since the car is up, since it's up already, I'll show you the rear suspension setup. There it is. These are some Ford Ranger rear shocks, dampening adjustable, and some coil springs with uh, footballs inside them to make it better dampening. So there you go, folks. Here's a look at the other side. Let's get in here and uh, you can actually see how I adjusted to get more angle. And there is a video on this, but you just weld in a tab right there and you have to shave your caliper so that it doesn't hit. Um, and those are the E36 coilovers. Again, you gotta weld in those joints and that's it. Yeah. I'm absolutely in love with this car uh, she's been a great trooper I have a full year and a half of just straight drifting nothing but oil changes and um, she's been great to me uh, only issue I've been having is axles and these axles are just weak but yeah here she is and Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video.